Welcome everyone to the X Umbers Podcast. Scholar McClarney with uh, here and with me is uh, Schoolman Fawcett. This is a classical Catholic education and podcast form. Uh, we are teachers. Dr. McClarney is even the headmaster at Chester Academy of St. Isidore Learning Center. World's only online Chester Academy. And, uh, you know, we have online classes, and if you want to know what they're like, this uh, podcast is a sample of that. So, uh, uh, ha- Happy New Year, everybody, uh, at the time of this recording. This is our first uh, time we've sat down in the year 2024, year of our Lord, 2024. Yeah. Uh, Dr. McClarney, what have you been up to? Well, uh, recovering. It's funny how the uh, Christmas season uh, goes to ebb and flow uh, during Advent is when uh, illnesses started to percolate it seemed and we were able to get sick prior to christmas thinking with the good hope all right we'll, we'll get over all our illnesses and then we'll go and visit everyone uh, oh sorry we'll be better we'll recover for christmas then we can go uh, celebrate family and friends and everyone else and we'll be in the clear now thanks be to god it worked out that way we, we mm. were able to get sick <laughs> during advent and recover just in time to go visiting, where then we seem to contract more illnesses. Uh, and I don't know if you can hear my voice, but I'm still in the throat, not the throes, rather. I'm at the tail end of fighting something off, which is weeks later. So, I don't know. How about yourself? Yeah, it was fine. Um, yeah, it was a lovely, lovely time. Uh, you know, son is one year old now, so we got to, you know, uh, he got to enjoy the holidays a little more than his first Christmas, yeah. where he was... Just over a month old and slept right. through most of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I we didn't really do much travel other than visiting my brother in law in Vancouver. Did you get a chance yeah. to did you get a chance to travel at all? Uh, well, I went into the great metropolis of Edmonton, uh, and went to my old stomping grounds, uh, visited my mom's house, and so that was, that was as far as we made it to to Mill Woods, which is uh, Boy, I am trying to press a segue here and you are just blocking me off at every corner. <laughs> is that right? Every turn. Uh, okay. So but, tell but, us a bit of I mean, your trip. But, 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 oh wow. On oh. that note though, um, the fact that we didn't really go anywhere or do anything like you mentioned um, it was beautiful I, I felt in some ways though it, it was disjarring because I was in a bit of a time loop because when you're ill and other people are ill you're up at any time of the night or day it doesn't even matter and you might wake up and because we're not actually going into work um, who knows what time it is mm-hmm. so but it was it was nice just to spend that time with the family I mean no one wants to be under the weather mm. but the, one of the fruits of it is like you're not going anywhere mm. and there's no pressure to have fun or do something big and exciting right, so yes. you have fun anyhow just playing board games and hanging out and laughing and, and you're just with your family right and, and, and there's nowhere else you first of all should go mm. and you don't feel pressure to do anything mm. so you're just there. That is and the problem with having a Sabbath time nowadays or vacation. It's like you feel like you need to maximize it because you get it yeah. so rarely. But then it's almost not even relaxing. You know? Right. Because so. of that, 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 hey, did you have, what did mm. you do? Tell me mm. about it. And it's so this, this, uh, well, we talked before about leisure. Uh, and so this is more, you're in the modality of, uh, well, you go from total work to total entertainment mm. without actually um, being free. Uh, mm. All right. To, mm. to be in the present moment. Um, now, I know we want to segue because uh, we want to talk about travel and, and, and pilgrimage. Uh, yes. And so uh, p- prior to uh, all this happening, I had the occasion uh, during the uh, the festivals leading up to Our Lady of Guadalupe mm. uh, to go to Mexico. And then we didn't actually go to Mexico City where, where um, you know, mm. Our Lady of Guadalupe is, uh, uh, the Tillman and so on. But we... <laughs> I mean, just not knowing enough about uh, Mexico, perhaps, but there's more than one Our Lady of Guadalupe church there. Uh, and You're so, kidding. Yeah. And, and we were I don't know. To, is, she, is she a big deal in Mexico? Yeah. I haven't really heard about well, this. So, it, was, it, was, it was mind-blowing. So you can really say a bit about pilgrimage itself, but a part of the, the bit is, is a culture shock. I mean, you're not just... Um, um, immersing yourself in another culture, but then coming back, or even while you're there, thinking of your own and your own experiences and, and, and connecting them. But yes, she is a big deal uh, there. And that was not the shocking part. But mm. when we when we showed up, uh, so this is in um, near Puerto Vallarta, the uh, cathedral there is our, named Our Lady of Guadalupe. And so uh, here the... Um, 
actual feast, some religions might know this, is um, December 12th. But there you start December 1st hmm. with, with pilgrimages and processions and so on. Uh, we, had, we had a beautiful time where we were able to go for the Feast of St. Nicholas, um, hmm. Immaculate Conception. Uh-huh. Uh, there's uh, St. Juan Diego is December 9th. Uh, and then this all leads up to... to our, and so uh, for, our, for the Immaculate Conception, December 8th, is the day we show up just outside uh, well, um, the uh, cathedral, and we've been there mm-hmm. early, and we heard, well, yeah, there's going to be processions and part of the mm-hmm. pilgrimages, which had already started the week earlier. We're like, hey, this is this sounds great. This is really exciting. And you now talking about culture, in my mm-hmm. little uh, the, the little town I near uh, live near is a place called Beaumont. It, it's about I don't know twenty thousand people or something like mm-hmm. that. And once a year they have a parade. Uh, they, well, they call it Beaumont Days, and there's a parade involved, and yeah. you could show up, and you know it's it's great because the fighter fighters are there. They'll throw candy at people. They, um, yeah. The furnace cleaning people are throwing out uh, brochures for their businesses. Yeah. Uh, the mayor will have his car, and people will have their muscle cars and everything else. And Knights of Columbus even have a a, yeah. a, a float and so on. And anyone who's anyone, a karate group, anyone can have a float. And you come through, and it's about, if you're standing there, sitting, it's about 90 minutes for this mm. entire procession to go um, uh, by if you're, if you're there as a marching band. That was my only really referent to a mm. procession or perhaps some kind of big celebration that's civic in nature as well. Okay. So here, we're there, we're, okay, let, we, here, you know, it's in that late afternoon, the processions are going to start, so we show up. You know, and and we go and wash, and okay, well, we, we, observing the the dancers coming through, and um, you know, often you have a, a twelve piece band that will come and play, and then the next group will come, and they'll process into the church, and then they will exit uh, because there's not enough room in the church, and so it's a great procession, and watching this, like, wow, look at all these people who are in this procession coming towards the church, and what was striking too is. Um, the, the, the civic in nature mm-hmm. so it wasn't I mean obviously it's a religious thing but you'd have the ministry of uh, uh, transportation uh, and mm-hmm. then just in being able to read uh, crudely uh, some of the signage is saying we thank Our Lady Guadalupe for her protection mm-hmm. right um, mm-hmm. or, or whatever group it was it, a group of oh, firefighters were there uh, mm-hmm. there was one very somber group they were more like um a uh, biker gang, it seemed like, hmm. uh, and so they they did, they weren't smiling as much as everyone else. But uh, nonetheless, it seemed like everyone and everyone was coming on this procession. Hmm. In any case, uh, it was about an hour and a half, two hours, and we were there taking it all in. You know, we were watching everyone, and you, know, you make your way into the church and all the rest, and you come around and see what everyone's doing. I thought, okay, well, it's over now. Um, hmm. So. Let's. I guess we're gonna go. I mean, we've already been here for you know a couple hours, so let, let's leave. So we walk not too far away from the from the church uh, to the uh, the Malacon, which is essentially the um, the boardwalk. It's it's right next against the ocean, so two blocks away basically. Mm-hmm. Um, hung out for a little while. I had a few other really interesting conversations with some people. There's lots of crowds, and uh, then we made our way back to the church before leaving, and it was kind of confusing. All of a sudden, we said, "Wait, wait a second. There's another procession just starting up. Like, didn't we just see it? Like, didn't mm-hmm. we just we, we just witnessed the entire event? Well, no, the, that was just like one slice of it. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, you look down the street, and for you know five blocks, you can see more groups of pilgrims lining up or processing uh, towards the church. And so this mm-hmm. again, this is um, on the Friday, on December eighth, uh, which is still leading up to the the mm-hmm. great celebrations. It was it was it was the um, degree. Uh, of, of uh, the depth of this uh, was was astounding compared to the categories I would have been used to in terms of what a parade or a procession mm. looks like, what a civic gathering might look like, and the length of it. How long does this take? Right. Mm. Um, so it, that that bit was um, was quite astounding. Now, part part of what it, it got me thinking about too is um, being in a different culture is thinking back I don't know if you're familiar with well, the, is Pope John Paul II put out an um, encyclical in um, the mid 90's on uh, the gospel of life mm. Evangelum mm. Uh, Vitae mm. the gospel of life and he introduced these categories which at the time I thought were very instructive he mm. talks about the culture of life 
and the culture of death. Do you? I mean, I'm just curious. Do you still hear people talking in those categories? Culture of life, culture of death. Is that kind of? Um, yeah, I don't so know. Much? That's it's 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 such a part of my mental furniture that like to me it seems familiar, but I'm not sure if it's still part of the general. Uh, Kind of vernacular of people anymore. Do you, I mean, what, what what have you found? Do you still hear people? I, do, I don't hear it. No, I yeah. don't. I don't. I, but those the categories are um, very in, in, intuitive. Uh, yeah, I mean, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Augustine's City of God, City of Earth. Like they're, they're categories that are very helpful for understanding mm-hmm. where we're going, what we're doing, and why we're doing it, yeah. and who's with us. Uh, right. Um, mm-hmm. So here. Um, the connection. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, let me say a little bit more about the gospel of life, and then I'll connect it back to mm-hmm. uh, pilgrimage and, and um, our trip uh, in, in, in Mexico. So, um, basically, the, exhort- the, the, the encyclical is this exhortation. Mm-hmm. Right? It's this call to be uh, inspired, sustained by confidence that comes from knowing uh, the mm-hmm. gospel of life, mm-hmm. which is um, centered in the person of Christ. Uh, the God who takes uh, on flesh in the person of a, a little child. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, here, uh, that's on one side. On the other side uh, is the culture of death. Mm-hmm. And in the culture of death, you have the eclipse of uh, our sense of God mm-hmm. and, and a sense of ourselves as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the eclipse of, of conscience, Mm-hmm. Or perhaps a, a befuddling of it, or mercury of it, uh, right? A reworking of, of what we think is right and mm-hmm. wrong, and in particular, uh, Pope John Paul points out that it's a society that tolerates or fosters behavior contrary to life, mm-hmm. uh, right? Uh, and so here, this is where we create or we consolidate structures of sin. Mm-hmm. As, as he calls them, uh, which go against life. And now, I mean, some of the examples, I mean, probably um, can think of. Abortion, e- euthanasia, mm. uh, suicide, uh, artificial contraception, and so on. Mm. Uh, the, these structures which we impose or foster um, or consolidate, these are ones which go against uh, uh, life. Now, on, on one, I guess, very uh, superficial level, it's like actual uh, biological breathing life in the sense of, in a, in a scientific mm. definition of what we mean by life. But it's much more than that. Mm. It, it's, it's in, it involves, well, the entire human. Right, which is which is beyond just uh, a heartbeat or something like that. But we're mm-hmm. talking about uh, the beginning of life or end of life um, ethics and so on. So it's it's a broader uh, fabric in which we understand what we're doing and mm-hmm. why we're doing it. And in, in mentioning uh, Saint Augustine's City of God, um, it's it's not like an empirical body, the the mm-hmm. um, culture of life, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So it's it's um, not like we're in the church, so. Um, we're in here and everyone else is a city of earth mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, you, you, I mean, you can have people going in and out or, or, or whatnot, right? <clears throat> but um, what's, what's fascinating about this is that um, Pope John Paul II points out, well, I mean, what would you do or what, what do you think you should do or your family should do um, if you find the culture of death is surrounding you, mm-hmm. is, is, is pervasive, is, is invasive? I mean, what what do you think some some people might? What might be your reaction? Uh, some so some people I think would the uh, response would be to withdraw. I think they're like yeah. lot fleeing Sodom, you know. Sure. Like there's no s- there's no salvaging this. Yeah. Let's go find. Let's either move to Mexico yeah. or create our own little encampment, yeah. our own yeah. little fortress yeah, to yeah. barricade ourselves against this yeah. culture of death, and yeah. we'll we'll somehow create a culture of life within these walls. Yeah. I guess we'll, we'll hide in the Shire. In the right? exactly, yeah, yeah. 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 something like this, um, and. Here, what's um, another exhortation, which which might um, believers might not really want to hear necessarily, um, is yeah. that uh, you know what, you're faced with this clash, this this yeah. this this clash between the culture of life and culture of death, you're in the midst of the conflict and you're involved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so you, you and he says it's your responsibility is inescapable. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, and here this is um, obviously. The, Solution is certainly clear, and he says being unconditionally pro-life, mm. and all that c- and entails, and so on. And some of the answers, um, again, that that might seem some of the solutions might seem straightforward enough. If you think back to Deuteronomy, where Moses uh, says, I, "I I set before you life mm. and death." Mm. Well, what should you choose? Oh. Mm. As Abraham says, "Choose life." Yeah. And those are the words that he uh, uh, echoes in 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 the cyclical. Uh, 
What is striking, though, is how it ends. Yeah. The encyclical includes moving beyond um, the faithful, uh, right? The, the uh, people sitting in the pews and so on. And Pope John Paul makes the argument that actually the gospel life is for all of society. Mm-hmm. So it is something that promotes the common good. Uh, th- this is, um, well, he says, without defending life mm-hmm. uh, and its principles, we can't actually have a flourishing democracy. Mm-hmm. We can't actually have a society without, um, that's not founded on the dignity of the human person. Mm-hmm. Right? So, so without this, um, we can't have peace or other goods uh, in our, our society that, that we are striving for, are we not, right? Mm-hmm. So um, e- otherwise we risk well, cannibalizing uh, our society or each other, fragmenting uh, mm-hmm. right into our own camps and so on. Uh, now, he, I mean, it's a fascinating way, the uh, rhetorical arc uh, of the encyclical ends. I, I recall um, some uh, commentators picking up on this a little bit and saying, well, hang on a second, um, all right, so this is the call, it's the culture of life, but the Pope is just critiquing our way of life. Like, he's critiquing, he's calling us a part of the culture of death. Mm. How are we supposed to respond to that? How, yeah. how, like, I thought you were interested in dialogue. <laughs> um, mm. why, why are you, um, you know, calling us out for advocating uh, for end of life uh, for, for for people or or uh-huh. uh, reproductive rights and so on. This this is uh, no. This this is what is most important. Um, you can't you can't call this part of the culture of death. Uh-huh. Um, so I don't know. What would you say? Uh, is is how how would you respond if you're? Uh, you know? <laughs> um. Well, if you read a Socratic dialogue, you'll find that dialogue does sometimes mean calling out your interlocutor, uh, right. or at least or or not calling them out, but identifying. You need to recognize that if you hold to this position, what this entails is this. So I don't think I don't think John Paul II is calling the world a, a culture of death to close off dialogue. It's actually meant to invite our dialogue partners to say, "Well, reflect on what it is that, you know that you're committed to, that you're enacting," right? Right. and you'll realize that there's death latent in it, right? and that we're proposing life instead. You know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm. And um, one of the images the church fathers have of Christ is the physician, mm. the divine mm. physician. And uh, St. John Chrysostom, he, he points this out like, hey, look, if you're sick, <laughs> mm. probably the last thing you want to do is visit the doctor. I can only imagine mm. what, what the medicine was like in the uh, sure. you know, fourth yeah. century mm. uh, Constantinople. Uh, but sure. uh, and nonetheless, um, he says, however, if you don't actually go, Mm. and get medicine even you probably don't want your Buckley's right you don't want this Mm. but you're going to need it if you want to get better so Mm. someone who is um, in that position of being morally compromised or having embraced uh, death uh, yeah maybe the last thing you do want to hear is uh, the good news but it's the one thing that we do need to latch on to to be healed Mm. it's the it's the antidote which is being offered uh, essentially which which so the answer is Jesus. The answer is Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Now, uh, on on that note, uh, speaking of Chrysostom, he points out uh, part of the point of um, a retreat or, or a pilgrimage is to step back from your daily affairs. Oh, yeah. So uh, when we were in Mexico, uh, that was certainly part of it. And, you know, one thing is going to the swimming pool. I mean, what else would you do but spend time in the water, uh, right? And... Uh, one one, uh, one occasion, uh, I remember this quite vividly, um, another family was there, um, and uh, their little boy walked right up to our little uh, Jerry. Now, Jerry is uh, six months mm. old and gave him a nice hug. Mm. I thought, oh, that's well, very sweet, right? And mm. he asked him, oh, boy, what's his name? And it turns out to be Michael, uh, which is actually Jerry's first name. Uh, mm-hmm. So, oh, very fitting, and the dad's name was Michael. And we had a great conversation about Later on, um, when it was all over, my wife pointed out, hey, did you notice um, that little boy who came and talked to you? He had Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, okay, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I saw that, but I, you know, didn't stick out in my mind mm-hmm. or anything like that. And when we were in the Melicon or other places in, in, in 
great groups. Um, my wife had pointed this out. I, hey, did you notice there's other people here with, with Down syndrome? Uh, and, and then so your attention becomes a, uh, raised a little bit, and then you start seeing this a little more often. Uh, and I think my wife might point this out because she works in the healthcare system, mm. where part of um, when a woman is pregnant, uh, they, they you know do an amniocentesis and they ask, uh, mm. you know, are they going to test for Down syndrome, right? Mm. Or and a whole host of other uh, things as well. But uh, very uh, the um, is a precipitous population of people mm. uh, are, are a percentage of people in the population with Down syndrome now in, in at least this part of the world uh, because of things like that. And, and so mm. it, um, the embrace of um, life was, was striking. Mm. Over there. And that, 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 I mean, that's one mm. uh, small sliver example of it. Uh, but families with ki- kids, this, this was mm. also, uh, I mean, that's not unusual mm. uh, to see. But the number of other people... Um, there with their children, not just uh, two adults by themselves. Uh, that that was also noticeable in in, mm-hmm. in the value of life uh, there. So uh, another example was we tried to stay up for the the first mass for um, Our Lady Guadalupe, which is at one a.m. Uh, mm-hmm. Now uh, on, on the twelfth, we didn't make it. Poor poor little Jerry, he fell asleep, and mm-hmm. this is around. It was just after midnight, so we were close, but mm-hmm. but we're like. I don't think we're going to make this. Sure, sure. Uh, so um, we, we, and we'd been in the church for hours already at this point, and it was, it was amazing just, again, watching the pilgrims' processions uh, leading up to this. Oh. So we're, okay, let's, let's go. We're going to walk. We're going to walk home. So, and it was about an hour and a quarter to, from, from the church back to uh, the, the place oh. where we're staying. Thought, okay, well, by the time we get there, it'll be one thirty. We'll see how this goes, and you know, maybe we'll catch a cab or something if we need to. But let's try our best, and we're supposed to be on pilgrimage here, so let's let's walk as good oh. pilgrims. I was shocked to see how many other families were out about also carrying little kids. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, this is a is a great national celebration, the feast, and so on. So, but I mean, at, at you know, one o'clock in the morning, um, you don't always expect families to be out together, but there they were. Uh-huh. Uh, so it was quite striking to see that the family structure and 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 that coherence uh-huh. uh, between between people and. Um, Right, so so we weren't the only um, uh, uh, I don't know what you call them crazies or something like this <laughs> out and about with 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 you know infants and in, late into the early mornings. But um, anyway, it, it was it was it was uh, quite notable. Um, now, another bit that was quite striking was so we mentioned secularization. Um, people told us the feast is no longer as big as it once was. Hmm. I mean, for for us, it was out of this world in the sense we couldn't conceive of processions lasting this long or mm-hmm. people showing up um, into church in, in, in these numbers, right? And, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's, it's a parochial thing. It's, it's not like the center of the country or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, here the... Um, oh, sorry, what was I talking about? The... Uh, well, with secularizing? Oh, secularizing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, 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 the numbers were, were apparently not, not nowhere near as oh, the ones part which Okay. Um, but... Um, if you go just two blocks over, uh, you you will actually see the uh, the promenade or the, the malecon where you have all sorts of restaurants and, and, and hustle and bustle, other events going on that are not related at all to uh, the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And so we're walking down there, and uh, what you notice, one restaurant that stuck out, uh, it's called, uh, I think I'll show you some pictures of it. Mm-hmm. So, um, I get it right in, in Spanish, La Viquita. Uh, mm-hmm. La Viquita, so, which is um, the cow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what was phenomenal about this restaurant is they had this flying cow. It looks like outer space or something like uh-huh. this um, On uh, as you enter in. So you have to enter in by walking almost into the belly of this cow or something like this underneath uh-huh. it, under its auspices. Uh, as, and then you can go into the... Into the the cow <laughs> yeah. uh, restaurant and standing outside uh, right next to it so it's owned by the same business I'm assuming but right next to it uh, is in, in, in the restaurant is called The Zoo mm. and uh, very fitting you have the cow on one side the zoo on the other and some of the, the waiters and hostesses are, uh, our servers are dressed up as animals mm. yeah. and, and, and it's quite hot there compared relatively yeah. speaking and, but it's, it's really wearing like a gorilla out form, a uniform mm-hmm. and so forth as you have to like you know, talk to customers and offer them menus. Yeah, and so on. right. Mm-hmm. And so, here was fascinating to see 
um, mm -hmm. what is this all about? And the music that's pulsating there is, is radically different than, than the mm -hmm. uh, percussions or other instruments that people are playing as they're walking into uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the church. Mm -hmm. But here it was fascinating to see this. This is something else that's an offer. It's this um, becoming uh, like an animal, mm -hmm. right? indulging in the appetite. So the pulsating music, uh, the lights that are flashing, mm -hmm. the, the, the animal likeness to it. Um, yeah, yeah. And just next to it, um, well, I guess, uh, you know, maybe 50 meters away or something like that, not, not, not that far, um, you have along there a number of sculptures and so on that the city must have put up because these, these mm. were uh, municipally uh, mm. owned in public space. And they were symbol, or, or they were aliens, <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, uh, statues honoring... Um, I don't know who uh, some yeah. invaders or something like this, yeah, yeah. but the poses that the these statues were taking, not unlike um, that of the cow, uh, were ones of worship. Mm -hmm. uh, they are ones where, where literally some of the uh, the creatures from outer space were bowing down before others and so on. And the and you can see all this on Google Street View. A coworker sure. was able to track these out. down. If yeah. you uh, um, uh, across from what was a. Uh, the Vaccarie. Yeah, or the Vaccarie. Yeah, yeah. So, or Vaquita, sorry. Um, and what's, what's phenomenal about it is we've been studying in our, our theology class Babylon. Mm -hmm. right? And the, um, the process of, of the devolution of what happens when we follow our animal impulses, which mm -hmm. happens to the Israelites as well. I mean, think of um, Solomon as a good example of a king uh, of this great wisdom and nobility but being totally allured by the other gods mm -hmm. in, in, in his marriage to um, all his concubines and so on. And so mm -hmm. this indulging of the appetites and uh, debasing becomes this occasion for, um, a, 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 I guess, a, sy a synthesis between becoming animal-like and worshiping other things of this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know why they picked aliens uh, as as mm. their kind of idols or statues in here. Maybe maybe it was um, no one would protest uh, that uh, this is mm. from uh, something out of the world. Maybe it's more neutral if we if we have these alien gods or something like that. Yeah, perhaps. Well, because that that they're beyond human, right? Like a cat, the cow is a regression. Right, the cow is yeah. something below us. Right, yes. and that's um, uh, this is the Pascal thing, the Dostoevsky thing. Yeah. Um, Sherlock Holmes actually says something similar in the Adventure of the Creeping Man. Uh, that you know, humans can go in one of two directions. Like we can strive to be angels, or we can you know fall to be uh, beasts. You know, right. But uh, if we try to be angels apart from God, we end up being bestial. Right. So, right. so some people may uh, want to just kind of regress into it. Like their their desires are bovine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they just want to have four stomachs and, and be appetite driven yes. and there's a debasement there yeah. um, other people are just as appetite driven but they want to be transcendent they want to be transhumanists they want to be gods right. so you want to be an animal but it's a, an otherworldly animal yeah. maybe right? yeah. so it scratches that religious theosis itch or apotheosis itch right. um, but really it just, it's just a different species of animal yeah. really possibly yeah, uh, there may be a bit of it, and and the very fact um, this this goes to a conversation we had off camera uh, about the, the the boundary confusion, oh, right, right yeah. between animals and aliens, right, yeah. something that's that's uh, transcendent and something that's bestial, right. right. There's a bit of that maybe there, and that's all very subversive to something uh, like a procession uh, where there's and sometimes the procession's about boundaries, I guess, right? It's mm. guiding towards um, as everyone sort of. Uh, in one sense, everyone's sort of leaving their normal life, and you could say that's becoming an amorphous blob, but it, it's not, in fact. It's actually a very intentional uh, marching. It's almost more akin to, like, an army uh, oh, on, on, yeah. uh, marching towards a goal right. than to just kind of like a concert or some kind of mess of celebration, right? Right. Uh, especially, you know, when you have the ones that kind of ascend up mountains and things like that. Yes. Uh, yeah. This is a, yeah, this is like a contrast to that. It's a, it's a rejection maybe of some ways of boundaries or a challenge to it or playing with it. Right. You know, these aren't, these aren't religious images. Why are they worshiping? You know, these are aliens, but why are they in a religious posture? It reminds me of when I was in China, my wife and I were at a shopping mall. And yeah. if you've ever been, anyone who's ever been to China and probably other parts of Asia, 
think this is talk about boundaries blending like you'll just be in like a shopping mall and you'll just come across like random demonstrations or like art galleries or like you don't know th- things aren't put some place will be like a coffee shop but it's also a jewelry store but it's also like a bookstore like it's very okay. it's very interesting there um but we came across an art exhibit where and i think i have pictures of it i can try to find for you later but one of the things in there was a uh, it was like an astronaut in like a jungle on the moon and he was carrying a cross Oh, Dragon Man! It was like a sculpture wow. yeah. of that. And another one was, um, it was like an, what was it? It was like an astronaut in like a Buddha meditative posture, okay. like the lotus position. Yeah. And another one had like monkeys wearing astronaut suits. Okay, uh, yeah. and, and that, that kind of gives me similar vibes to what. Yeah. And of course, you know, this is this is abstract art in another country. So I mean, it's very yeah. mystifying to me in a lot of ways. But I got a sort yeah. of similar, like it, it hits you strangely, yeah, right? Because you instinctively go like, this is these are weird blending of genres religion and uh and and the primitive and and the science fiction and the sleek and the technological and clean right uh, yeah the, there's something about that that seems boundary like transgressive you know in a lot right. of right and maybe yeah. there's something similar there yeah uh although because it's a, in a public space in a not fully secularized country maybe it's more mitigated than it would be in china uh, or maybe then it would be in Edmonton. I could imagine yeah. something on White Avenue that would be that. Sure. <laughs> it, people would protest it, but it would probably still be put out, you know. Sure. So. Um, now, okay, now the um, dichotomy there, or maybe it's not a dichotomy, between the animal and, and goddess or godlike uh, impulse. So it's the indulgence of the appetites um, in the here and now or the appetite uh, drive to transcend our categories. That would be like the desire to become like a god mm. or... Um, Become like an animal, which maybe this brings us full circle, but it reminds me of um, thinking back to uh, society and the polis. This is what you know Aristotle says: is uh, you know um, we're political animals, and uh, mm. not to belong to a polis is you're either a god or mm. you're an animal, mm. <laughs> right? And mm. so um, here the um, thinking of the culture of life, cultural death, and and, and what does society? Uh, we're, 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 um, what is our role in society, and what, mm. what role do we have to play in this, in this clash, in this, mm. uh, this dynamic? Uh, so, uh, on the return, and this is again part of the point of a pilgrimage, is um, to, I guess, reorient yourself in life, because uh, in the pilgrimage you're going somewhere with a goal. Uh, but when you return, mm. uh, uh, please God, is that, mm. uh, yeah, you can now. Uh, have a new vigor, uh, which you um, see things better for what they actually are, mm. uh, because we're on this journey uh, to mm. Zion above. So, on the way back on on the plane, um, it was it was a phenomenal um, encounter with. Well, we we're listening to the the stewardess, and she's giving us instructions on um, you know. Uh, it, Preparing, you know how that is. If you're on a plane, if you're written, you mm-hmm. listen to these instructions. You probably heard them, you know, before or at least on the way there. They're almost identical. But mm-hmm. she had this speech down. It was polished. Mm-hmm. I, I, I asked her later. She, four years, she'd been working on this, uh, you know, seven minute speech. Mm-hmm. But basically, uh, it was hilarious. She had all these zingers in there. Uh, for instance, like there's only two ways out of a relationship, um, but there's eight out of this plane. So please pay attention. Mm. And, you know, extra, and then um, when it was concluding, she says, now we'll listen to this um, again in the language of love, which uh, if you're flying in Canada, that's, that's French. Mm. Uh, and, but when um, at the beginning of her talk or her uh, announcements, she said, um, for those of you traveling with children, and she paused and said, why? <laughs> it's a great... Laughter. Oh sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, sure, in the plane, yeah. a lot of people laughed, and it was it was kind of a rhetorical question, but it seemed like you knew the answer. Mm. Why would you do that? And it was. I mean, I couldn't help but laugh myself. Sure, sure. But I could. I I I I knew for many reasons she was wrong. Mm. She was wrong um, on on an, a technical grounds, and also um, in the broader transcendent grounds. For example. When we were traveling, um, we had other kids with us as well, but with Jerry, uh, he was like our passport. So <laughs> when, when we were, um, even in uh, Canada here, going through security, if you have a little kid with you, and several of them, it's even better, um, <laughs> they're going to rush you through. They don't want you making noise sure, right, uh, right, and yes. all the rest. So we got some really good treatment. <laughs> uh, same <laughs> thing when we got to Mexico. Uh, we Our Spanish wasn't great, but we knew, like, Leninos, Leninos, the children. So we got to buy 
bypass huge lines because we had kids with us at getting through um, security and so on. So also, um, but it's more than just that. When I was walking through the streets um, uh, at Puerto Vara, not, not, not everywhere, but especially when you got towards uh, denser crowds, um, I would be holding, uh, I mean, often I would be holding something, we had a stroller as well. If I was holding Jerry, I, I mean, my Spanish is you know, very little. But you have so many more encounters with people. Mm. Uh, it is, it's great because often um, ladies would come by and they would just grab his toes mm. that are sticking out. Sometimes they'd grab his hand. And if you tarried long enough, sometimes just take him out of your hands. Uh, like, okay, here you go. Uh, no, I, you know, it's funny. You told me that anecdote and I was <laughs> repeating it to someone, in a coworker, yeah. and they took that as like, Oh, like a, like they wanted to commiserate. Don't you hate when people do that? Oh, right? Like, they come up to your kid and they yeah. touch your kid without asking permission. Yeah, and yeah. Like, it's so weird and uncomfortable when people do that. Uh, but you don't receive it in that spirit. You're delighted by it. No, well, it's as, as a um, again. There's a bit of a language barrier, so mm-hmm. I'm obviously a foreigner. Um, but it felt like I'm at home in, mm-hmm. in that I would normally not give my child on t- uh, unless, like in Canada, at least. If it's a neighbor who comes over, or or a relative certainly, but beyond that, mm, I I can't think of it. You know, too yeah, many times it's come yeah. to mind where someone in Canada is like, uh, you know, you just give them your child because yeah, they yeah. want your child, and so and again maybe perhaps the language barrier is part of it where you can just tell by the, their facial expressions like they're so happy to see him, mm. and they're so happy that we're experiencing this moment together. Um, there's a, there's a joy, there, there's mm. there's a there's a. Um, uh, Hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a um, how would you call it? It's almost unarticulable, but um, a, yeah, a sense of, of humanness hmm. uh, of being here and a happiness hmm. uh, in the Aristotelian sense of, of, of the term uh, eudaimonia. So uh, yeah, he was my ticket, and hmm. it was an ability to communicate with other people uh, through him. Uh, you have so many mo- more encounters with others, and you know I did try to say a few things as I could. Uh, they were a little, you know, a bit more patient. I think if it was by myself, maybe some people might. I I don't know if they would bother to talk to me or not. Right? Yeah, yeah. But there's a certain interest in children. I think oh, yeah, there's a yeah. certain mm-hmm. joy that's with them, and um, so the, the, he was. I would say those traveling with children. Why? The answer is absolutely. You want to. Mm. Uh, it it mm. opens so many doors. It, yeah, it, and yeah. so many uh, conversations. Later on, we got a chance to actually talk with the stewardess a little bit. You know, you got five hours on the plane or something like this. Sure, sure. So, uh, and she got a chance to hold Jerry, and, <laughs> and it was great. And then a few of them actually came we were at the back, because, you know, after a while, the kids only sit still for so long, right? So mm-hmm. you wandered towards the back of the plane and got chatting with them a little bit. And it turns out, she really wants kids, <laughs> uh, you know, and she's uh, been trying to convince her uh, significant other for uh, some uh, time now, and it's something. And she says she wants four. And I said, uh, "Good for you. That's great." Uh, and it was it was it was it was a great witness to be able to again doing the same thing that we'd learned in Mexico, pass the baby around, uh, <laughs> and different services got to hold them and so on. And they got so getting through um, immigration. Mm. On the way back was another telling experience. Um, one with with the stewardesses. They had tarried after getting through customs a little bit, just to say goodbye to Jerry. <laughs> and they they said in unison, "Bye, Jerry. Aww. See you later." It, it was really touching. Um, another thing that was striking is is coming back through the baggage claim area. Oh. What do we see? Well. In the city of champions, uh, they had four. That would be Edmonton. For those of you who aren't aware of our reputation, no. yeah. our well-deserved reputation yeah. as the city of champions. Uh, yeah, these are our gods, mm. sports figures. Mm. So one carriage is wrapped in um, a hockey team. Mm. Or there's actually two hockey teams. One's the semi-pro, then the pro team. Uh, there is a football team and. Or someone else, uh, I can't even remember now. But in any case, mm. uh, they, 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 this, these are our acceptable gods, right? Mm. Uh, there's zero um, reference to to um, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Mm. Whereas, like you're traveling in the um, bus station, for example, uh, there's a candle outside and the statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe when you're when you're going in and so on. Or you're just mm. on the bus and so. On. So this this it was kind of like the, I guess we're used to a cold. Um, Imminent uh, in the sense of we're excluding the transcendent yeah. uh, in our architecture, 
in, mm. in our uh, public iconography and so on. Mm. And this, this became very evident. I mean, we do have some substitute gods, and those would be sports figures. We name our streets after them. We have statues of them. Mm -hmm. That's where we'll put our public funding, our capital. Yeah. But, but um, other than that, yeah, forget it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it, it, was, um, it, was, it was coming back to uh, our, our regular mundane uh, mm. uh, life and realizing that um, it doesn't have to be as... Um, Mundane. It, it, mm. it can be sacred as well. Uh, mm. in, in, in the secular can be sacred uh, in, in our, our day to day affairs. If we, but we have to work hard for that um, as well. And for me, uh, part of it is um, the gospel of life. It's it's the joy uh, of of being alive and saying yes mm. uh, to life and all the co um <laughs> effects that that has uh, uh, that carries with it. You know, I heard someone once say that the problem, the mistake that the the pro-life movement makes. Yeah. We also have this in Edmonton. We have the March for Life. I, I heard someone say one. It really should have been the Parade for Life. Oh right? yeah. Because you think about it, they're gay pride parades. Oh sure. Yeah. Right. There's something celebratory about parades, whereas there's something right. militant about um, oh, a, a march. march. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I suppose you could, I suppose you could counter that. Well, it should be militant. You know, we're fighting for the rights of the unborn. Yeah. Fair enough. But. But I but the, the point they were making is I think similar to what you're saying, which is but where's the celebration of life? Like it should yeah. be a joyous thing where it's like it's not merely that we're opposing the culture of death and evil, but it's, it's proactively like we are enjoying and relishing in the joy of life, the joy of babies and family, right? Um, and I think of um, one of the biggest witnesses I think the church has today is the Corpus Christi procession. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, that's where, I mean, that's the closest we get to doing the street preaching thing anymore, really. It's yeah. <laughs> closing down the streets and, and marching. So maybe that's what Beaumont needs. Is, some, yes. is, is, a, is a Corpus Christi procession to rival yes. your, your uh, civic parade. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we all, everyone just kind of con converges on uh, the Basilica and does sure. it in downtown Edmonton. And it's a blast. But um, what, what, would it be different if we had, like, a sh short park one? And a Beaumont one, and like a Fort Saskatchewan one. Yeah. That was all like a big thing that you're describing. That's yeah. it. That's a 90 minute thing that that concludes. And this is the other thing: it's culture leading into cult. Yes. Right. Like, does yeah. it culminate in a big right. picnic afterwards? Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that becomes. I mean, Christmas is the ultimate example of this, right? That yeah. the, the, the secular world has not shaken in the West. Yeah. Right. Where it's still this religious holiday, despite how much they like it, they flatten that out yeah. with all these cultural accoutrements. It, yeah. Kind of like what C.S. Lewis was talking about. We quoted this in our country music episode, oh. right? Like, the, you don't distinguish clearly between like the temple, you know, between the church and and, and the turkey dinner afterwards. Right. Right? They're all kind of yes. clustered together in this like religious yeah. experience that is Christmas, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there probably there's some recovery of that, or rediscovery, or or new forms of that. Even it doesn't have to, you know, uh, for our world, uh, uh, maybe, maybe the way forward or a way forward, you know. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to just go on pilgrimages for this, but we can be pilgrims uh, where we're at, you know, yes. in the communities where we are. Yeah, so. yeah. Very so, intriguing, yeah. Well. Yeah. And speaking of celebration and, and culture and cult, maybe we'll um, we end with a, a word of prayer? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so let's pray to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gospel of life. We thank you for you sending into this world your Son, who draws us to the fullness of life, we pray that amidst the confusion, the tumult, the darkness which pervades uh, much of life, we may be witnesses to your word, that we may be those who are infused with the spirit of life, the spirit of the fullness of life, and all that it entails. We pray that uh, the joy, the hope which we, which we know in you, our true anchor, may uh, bear fruit in our lives and be a testimony uh, in this world. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.